Section District Pension Board of Trustees regular meeting Thursday, October 9, 2014 at 18, 16 hours. Trustee Aronson, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> we're, not, we're not robots. Pledge of allegiance to the mayor. <laughs> That's a different one. I'm ready now. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you. Uh, roll call of members. Uh, let the record show that Trustee. Uh, Wisnowski was stranded out of town and unable to make it. Everyone else is present. Uh, any additions or deletions to the agenda? The only one that I have is we're going to delete the Susan Emming funeral benefit until we get more information so we can uh, do that properly. Any other additions or deletions? Okay. Good. Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to approve. So we'll so move. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Review uh, the July 10th, 2014 regular meeting minutes. I move they be approved as submitted. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Make the record show I abstain from that vote. <coughs> okay, uh, any old business to be brought forth by the trustees? See none. New business, uh, first item 2015 pension budget. Okay, um, so in the past we have not done a separate uh, budget for the uh, pension uh, uh, plan. Um, the, but uh, there are expenses that are uh, allowed and, and customarily taken from the pension fund uh, for uh, you know, basically the, the costs of, of administering the fund. And we've done that every year, but we've never uh, done a, a separate budget for it. Um, we were advised just recently uh, that we should be doing that. Uh, so basically what I have put together is um, it's pretty simple. There's a, a total of uh, five, line, five line items that uh, are items that would be spent out of the budget during the year and uh, basically just looking at it essentially would be the same cost that we have uh, you know, on an annual basis for that. That includes the audit, uh, legal uh, counsel, um, administration fees which are charged by FDPA, uh, director fees, which are the fees for uh, you attending the meetings. The 250 goes to us. I can't hear you. The 250 actually is paid to us. Oh, that's the one that's paid to us. Right. And the actual it's not their fees are the FDPA ones. Because we don't have Sorry. any control over that. Right. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so, and I believe that uh, this will end up being part of the district budget uh, overall, but uh, I believe that the, the pension board should, uh, you know, um, recommend. Uh, We'll make a motion recommending this budget for the uh, to be included in the district budget. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, you need just more discussion on that? So yeah, just a question, Chief. I'm not sure that the pension fund wouldn't pay these. The pension fund does pay them. How are you saying it becomes a part of the district budget? Then? It's got to be reflected in it. Yes. Yeah. Why? It's, this, this is pension money. There should be. It's completely separate. Am I not getting that right? Um, well, that, actually, that, that's probably uh, correct. I mean, it probably is that. Uh, uh, well, you said there was a recommendation that, that we should do it this way. So. Right. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, it is a, it is your fund the, as the pension board. So. Um, well, I think it's us acknowledging that there's not only fees embedded in the earnings of the fund. There are also administrative fees and things that are paid by the pension that are a cost of deduction from the pension fund and its earnings. Which we also do as the annual warrant that we send in FPPA. But again, that's the pension sending that warrant. Yeah. That's correct. Asking FPPA but to it disperse, actually is disperse money. both funds. 
I don't know if this makes any difference, but it's money that the district pays, and then it's a reimbursement to the district from that. Okay, but it should be no cost to the district. Right. Okay. It's a net zero. Okay. And I only may ask for this clarification because I think you're probably doing budget in the next uh, regular board meeting, and I don't know that this belongs as a line item in your Right, it wouldn't budget. be a line item in our budget. It just would be included in our annual budget materials. Okay. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm more clear now. Thank you. Can that be stated in the uh, initial request? motion? Yeah, motion. Yeah, um, yeah. So basically, motion to uh, you know approve the the uh, 2015 budget as presented. Uh, that's good. That makes sense. Yep. Okay. Yes, person. Okay. Everybody clear on that now? Yeah. All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Uh, next odd item uh, that's on the agenda, uh, the Darlene Coy issue off the 2013 audit. The uh, director was asked he wanted that brought to our attention and wanted to discuss it. Unfortunately, he couldn't make a meeting, so we're just going to table it until the next pension meeting uh, so that he can uh, address his concern. Uh, then the next item will be the survivor benefit for Susan Emmy. According to our bylaws, we may pay uh, not more than 50% of the monthly pension retirement benefit. Uh, Dan's monthly benefit was 400 therefore a motion for up to $200 uh, would be in order if anyone was so inclined. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. What's on what? Yeah, go to page. Uh, keep going. Keep going. Okay. Keep going. Like this. Oh, okay. Keep going. That yeah. has several pages. Oh, Darlene has several pages. Yeah, have a lot. I gave you one. There you go. Yeah. There you go. And then if you go a little further, yeah. uh, you'll see the Article uh, 14, the survivor benefit. Mm -hmm. Pension board may pay an annuity to the spouse of not more than 50% of the monthly retirement pension. Right. So a motion was made and seconded for $200 a month. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that motion carries. Uh, the next item is the FPPA Volunteer Pension Authorization Form. Okay, this form, this is a new form from FPPA, uh, and what it um, essentially is, is uh, they want confirmation now on an annual basis of who in the district is authorized to um, basically um, answer questions to them or uh, you know who would be their contact uh, for the purpose of you know paying retiree benefits paying plan expenses completing actuarial uh, data review uh, delivering actual data and reports and delivering the annual quarterly allocation reports uh, and so uh, what I would recommend is a motion to appoint um, the chair of the board, uh, of the pension board, has the first contact for member eligibility, pension plan, plan amendment, and plan expenses. Uh, then to um, have myself appointed as the second contact for those three same items. And then have uh, Administrator Marie Hensick uh, as the uh, point of contact for actuarial evaluation and allocation reports. Okay. Did you, get, did you get that? Yeah, I get that. <laughs> okay. God, there's a recorder. Okay, is everybody pretty clear on that? Yeah. yeah. Got an understanding of that. Okay. Uh, is there a second on that motion? Second. Sure. All right. We need a maker. We need a maker. Uh, yeah, I can't make the motion. You can't make it. Uh, so moved. Second. 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 Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 
Okay, then that will take us to the second quarter allocation report. Scott? Yes, Anything else? No. Good. All right. Seeing no other business, uh, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn the pension trustees meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. At 1829. Mm -hmm. District Regular Board of Directors meeting Thursday, October 9th, 2014 at 1834 hours. Director Branch, you turn Yes. We use the pledge. Got it. The pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Yep. The roll call of board members show that uh, the director was nasty, uh, was detained out of town and unable to attend. All other board members are present. Uh, first item will be additions or deletions to the agenda. Uh, you're gonna I'm gonna add that. Yeah, yeah, under new business, I'd like to add a uh, request for a special meeting. Is there any other additions? I have one. Deletions? No. Nope. Uh, motion to approve? So moved. Or second. second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. Uh, legal update. Nothing affecting. Uh, review the September 11th, 2014 regular meeting minutes. to uh, approve the September 11, 2014 minutes. So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, that will take us to financial matters. Uh, for the financial report of September, uh, we had total expenses of 152587 of which 43,248 were uh, surf expenses, is that correct? And they're gonna be reimbursed. So those are those are not really expenses to the district. They'll be offset by they'll be offset by revenue. Right. What exactly. what do we approve? The total amount or you actually paid it, so I think you have to Yeah, okay. The well then we'll we'll uh, uh, ask for a motion to approve one hundred and fifty three thousand Five hundred eighty-seven dollars in expenses for the month of September. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Curious. Um, other than that, well, there, there are budget materials here, but you'll take us through that. Right. And then we have, of course, the detail on um, on the expenses and revenues for the month. We also have a separate income statement for the wildland fire response. Surf account. Um, that's it. Any questions? Any questions for Al? 
Hey, Chief, do you want to do the 2015 budget draft now? Or? Uh, certainly, I can. Um, so this is the first draft of the 2015 budget. Uh, you know, we, uh, we start the process in October. However, uh, unfortunately, a lot of uh, both our carryover and our um, uh, actual revenues and some, many of our expenses, we're not going to actually know uh, this early in the, in the process. Uh, a lot of our um, you know, cost data doesn't come in until later, and in fact, our revenue data uh, you know, won't be finalized until December. Uh, so uh, as we're working on this, this uh, draft is, uh, is a very rough draft at this point. Um, we, uh, and basically, uh, you know, and there, you will see actually in the carryover section that this carryover in the, the first draft actually is uh, basically still there from last year. It's not, uh, not been brought up to uh, you know, what our current amount is, and again, uh, that, that's probably not going to be something we will know for sure at, at, until we get closer. We've got uh, several large projects that were budgeted for this year that uh, we have not um, uh, started on, and we'll have to see whether or not they're going to be included in this year's budget or if we're going to move them into next year's. A big part of that is that, uh, you, know, um, you know, we've got uh, the two tenders that are uh, projected to come in. Now their, their goal is to get them to us before the end of the year because they want to get paid before December 31st. Uh, but they're, it's really tight. They're saying December 27th right now, so if there are no delays, uh, it actually will come in this year. If not, it'll come into next year's budget. We're putting those under lease, is that correct? Uh, that, is, that is the plan. Uh, and so... Uh, so it, even if they're... You know, there's some time to set the lease document up and all that kind of stuff. That's correct. And, and what we normally have with that is that uh, the first lease payment is due a year after. So the, that, that uh, money may not even start coming due until 2016. However, the, the board, uh, you know, we may discuss if we want to pay part of that, uh, you know, up front. But uh, frankly, with lease rates still remaining um, ridiculously low, uh, we probably want to continue to, to take advantage of that while we can. Uh, okay. We should have, um, by next month, uh, we should have uh, quotes on le lease amounts that will be good for that time period. And um, then we can make a determination okay. uh, on, on the purchase uh, for that. One of the other projects that uh, you know we had um, uh, planned for this year include was the uh, uh, to start the remodel process upstairs here, and uh, that's uh, has something that's been pushed off because of other projects. Uh, so we'll see if, if we get to anywhere on that project before the end of the year also. Um, we, uh, we ended up coming into uh, 2014 uh, with $855,101. Uh, that was the audited amount uh, carried over. And um, that actually um, was quite a bit better than we had originally budgeted for. And that's also reflected in what we're looking at going into 2015, particularly because we have uh, delayed some projects and also because we've actually managed to be a little bit more cost effective than, than originally anticipated. Uh, you, know, we, you know, the draft right now is for about 1.3 million carryover going into next year. Um, that should probably be less, but still probably in the neighborhood of uh, better than uh, $1 million, which is a big improvement over, you know, we were sitting at, um, you know, uh, about, I believe 300,000 about four years ago. But that, that, that part of that is due to the delay in the purchase of the Part of that is due to the delay. So, so although, whatever it is, 1.3 or 1.2, essentially we have, you know, we have part of that money is going to be... That's correct. Um, well, that's, that's why he was conservative when he said yeah. it's still over a million. Yes, and uh, and we should, and next month we should have, uh, you know, a number of those projects nailed down as right. far as timelines right. go. Um, the assessed value uh, in Jefferson County, uh, you know, this is an off year for... Uh, 
um, assessments. So normally we would anticipate that there were, that it would be flat with uh, any, a little bit of new construction if any occurred. However, we actually saw a very slight decrease in assessed value in Jefferson County and then a very slight increase, actually a 3% increase in, um, or 2.5% in Park County. Uh, the total ends up being a, a, a decrease of about 0.25% in assessed value. So it averages out to roughly, um, roughly where we were at, a couple thousand dollars less in uh, tax revenue going into next year and this year. Um, and again, uh, you know, we'll get final numbers uh, in December on that, and uh, we'll set our final, um, you know, when we get the final eva uh, evaluation statements, we'll be able to, uh, uh, you know, we'll get, a, get the final budget done. Uh, basically, uh, what we're looking at with that, uh, as it currently stands, is uh, available property tax of uh, uh, 1.277 million for Jefferson County and 143,000 for Park County. Um, you know, we had seen collections fall over the, you know, to a low of about 97% uh, in uh, 2002, um, and then they climbed back up to about 98%. Uh, we, uh, again, are anticipating about 98%, but over the last two years, we've actually started to see some of those back taxes being paid, uh, so we should see a little bit of that come back again. Um, and we did have refunds and abatements uh, of um, about $8,200 uh, between the two counties, so that will be added in as well. Uh, specific ownership taxes have been coming up, uh, and uh, they're going to be coming in over budget this year, uh, which is fortunate. Um, we also saw an increase this year in inspection fees. Uh, basically, uh, the, the, we, we're starting to see more building permits come across and more requests for reviews of um, you know, remodels. Um, we've got uh, actually uh, a couple of pre uh, possible large projects that are being discussed um, and may end up uh, generating uh, some additional um, uh, work there, and then in addition, we had a significant remodel on the high school and a couple of other projects during the year. So, um, after hitting kind of a bottom in the in the building uh, uh, permit uh, income a couple of years ago, we're starting to see that uh, come back up again, and we also had an increase in resulting in uh, additional costs for the contract uh, fire marshal because of that. Um, ambulance billing is going to be a little bit above where we had initially estimated and for next year we're really looking at uh, trying to, you know, estimating probably a similar amount uh, for that. And then in the SURF uh, reimbursement, you know, obviously uh, because this was a very quiet fire uh, season across the country, that fell off uh, quite a bit over the last couple of years. Um, it uh, was uh, the slowest uh, fire year in a number of years at about 43% of uh, normal uh, fire uh, activity. But even at that, um, we brought in a net uh, reimbursement for the use of our apparatus of $131,000, uh, which really uh, you know, indicates that even on a, on a very slow year, uh, we can kind of count on some uh, activity in the in that request. Um, you know, this year all of our activity was in Northern California, where we sent a, a couple of rigs out to assist out there. So overall, right now we're projecting uh, a revenue that's uh, down about three percent from last year, or from 2014, uh, at at this point. Uh, going into our expenses, I'm just going to hit some of the high points of what we're looking at with that. Um, we uh, expect uh, governance and, uh, to go down because we don't have elections scheduled in administration. Uh, one of the things, we, we ran out on our copier lease and got a, we're going to be getting a new copier on a new lease at half the cost. 
So, you know, it's not much, but it sure helps. Um, I, I think it's a great deal. <laughs> um, emergency services, uh, one of the things that uh, we had budgeted for was dispatching, uh, but uh, because of the transition time frame on that uh, and the fact that the JCECA board, the 911 board, uh, voted to pick up 100% uh, of the first year cost on that after we had set the budget. Uh, we did not spend any of the uh, money that we had budgeted in 2014. And according to Evergreen, they're actually going to carry over enough in that um, that uh, uh, granting from JCECA that they anticipate there will be no cost for us next year. And then the following year, we will uh, begin picking up a portion of that. Uh, so we uh, eliminated that budget line item. Uh, we don't know, I mean, looking you know, into 2016, uh, we do have the proposal for moving to a joint uh, dispatching center, and we have no budgeting figures to look that far out at this point. Um, one of the things that we did see with this year, and we're gonna have to address going into next year, is continued uh, overtime costs that are well above what uh, we'd like to see them at. So that's something that uh, we're going to want to address, you know, how we can deal with that uh, in terms of staffing, uh, looking into uh, the budget uh, before we finalize it for this year. Um, we did purchase quite a bit of PPE uh, for next year, and we uh, expect that to uh, go down a bit. However, we still don't have uh, numbers for the Recruit Academy and what we'll be needing there, so there will be some that will probably be added into the base uh, budget for fire operations. Uh, one of the things we did because uh, we ran, we didn't run up as high in the PPE as we had anticipated, and also because we uh, you know, didn't uh, spend as much on uh, the apparatus replacement is that we uh, picked up uh, uh, quite a bit of the other uh, equipment uh, that uh, we needed, uh, including uh, hose and, and similar equipment. We're going to probably need to have a, a fairly sizable budget for that in 2015 as well. With the new engine coming in, we've got a number of items that we're going to need to uh, purchase to outfit that, both replacement items for stuff that's actually should have been replaced in, you know, in the past, and also specific items that we need to you know, put together for, for the new uh, design engine. You're talking about the rescue pumper? The rescue pumper, yeah. What about equipment for the uh, tenders that are coming in? The tenders uh, are going to have uh, much less equipment needs. Uh, they'll be a little bit. Uh, one of the big ones that we're going to have to look at are uh, our SCBA. Uh, that's going to probably be our biggest cost item uh, for the equipment. Uh, we do want to put SCBA on the tenders, uh, and uh, we had not had them on the old ones in the past. Uh, and those, unfortunately, are fairly spendy items. Yeah. Um, one of the other big equipment costs that we'll see going into uh, next year for the rescue bumper is that we're going to, we've been running three inch hose and five inch hose. Uh, and uh, the five inch hose is great if you hook up to a hydrant, puts a lot of water out. Most of the time, we run three inch hose because, you know, you, I mean, if you lay out a whole bed of five inch hose off one of our engines, you can fill the hose halfway with water and you run out. Um, so they don't do us a lot of good. So what we're planning to do is actually eliminate both of those and go to four inch hose instead, which is still large enough for us to operate, you know, up to a thousand gallons a minute on a, you know, a fairly sizable fire, but is a lot uh, lighter and easier to handle and reduces the need for us to carry three inch as well. Normally, the guys run the three inch out because not only does it take a lot of water, but it's the stuff is really heavy and difficult to pack back on the truck. So by going to four inch, you know, we'll actually, you know, be a little bit, uh, it'll be a little easier on the firefighters' backs, a little less space on the engine, and certainly a lot more efficient on the fire ground. Mm -hmm. So those are a number of the things that we're looking at with the, with the new engine that we're going to have to budget into that. Uh, one of the other big uh, budget items with that is going to be replacing our rescue tools, our heavy hydraulics, which are also uh, getting closer to their end of their life as well. 
Um, wildland firefighting was pretty quiet this year, and we, it's not a big uh, line item budget. Uh, EMS operations, um, we ha really haven't seen much change in, in uh, our costs in there. Uh, one of the things I am looking at doing going into prevention and training for next year is we had uh, budgeted uh, originally to split uh, Deputy Chief's wares salary between those two line items. Um, it's going to be just budgetarily easier to just put it in one. So what I'd like to do is just put that all under training and that will, uh, you know, instead of having it split with prevention, it doesn't change the amount there. Uh, we're just going to have to, you know, we'll just move it into one one item. Uh, with that, with with all of the staff, one, we have not included in, in here any uh, salary adjustments, benefit adjustments, or um, staffing adjustments at this point. That's still items that we need to look at uh, before the end of the year. Will we, will we still have contract plan reviews? Yes, yeah, we still will have the contract plan reviews uh, because we don't have anybody that has the certifications oh, right. to, uh, to actually stamp a plan, okay. uh, which is why we'll still continue to work with Evergreen on that. Um, we're hoping that we will transition out of the regular business inspections though. Uh, because that does not require a certification. Uh, so those will, those will come back in-house, uh, but uh, the plan reviews will have to continue to, to uh, contract out. Okay. Um, the, you know, one of the things that we did earlier this year, uh, the, uh, we had the, eliminated the mechanic position because you know, our, our budget estimates were basically that well, we would uh, be, it would be less expensive for us to contract that service to Evergreen. Um, after five months, uh, I reviewed that, uh, the performance of that, and um, our uh, cost for having an in-house mechanic um, was, just for the mechanic's actual cost, was uh, $8,332 a month. Uh, our cost uh, to have that service performed for the last five months for Evergreen was $4,040. So essentially, we cut our cost in half there. Uh, you know, it was essentially about $100,000 to have a mechanic on staff. It's uh, at the current rate, uh, it's $50,000 a year for us to contract out that out. So uh, that has proven to be um, at least as good a savings as we'd initially uh, estimated on that. Facilities, uh, the basic facility costs, including utilities and uh, whatnot, uh, are not uh, anticipated to change much. And then obviously capital's a big, uh, a big question that I think that we're gonna have to look at in, uh, in next month's meeting. You know, we should have a total, um, Kind of a, a plan of when when those things are, are going to be coming due, and uh, you know what decisions we make about uh, lease on, on all of those um, you know uh, apparatus, and uh, you know kind of setting up that schedule. We do have you know the the figures of the current um, you know lease amounts uh, right now going into next year, which uh, you know include. Um, Right now, that, that 166,000 in lease payments and uh, uh, 26,690 uh, are estimating the additional uh, addition of the tender lease, uh, but is not including the rescue bumper because if we do go ahead with the same uh, format for the rescue bumper, we would not see a first payment due until 2016. So those numbers are still fairly uh, flexible going into next year also. Um, and so at this point, without plugging those numbers in, you know, that basically leaves us about $497,000 that we haven't plugged into the budget yet. And obviously, as I've, been, I've said, those that number will not be uh, that big once we get everything uh, um, kind of uh, allocated. But that, uh, what I tried to do here was to at least get our basic uh, budget, you know, in place, and then, and then the 
the decisions that we have to make will go uh, will happen before uh, you know before we finalize the budget in December. And at the next time you'll present us with your scheme for um, moving forward. I don't know if you have any sort of five-year projections. Or yes, uh, we should have that next meeting as well. Um, including the capital so we can right. see right. uh, because the cash flow need. Exactly. We've got a couple of other things that, that we haven't talked about here yet that we did talk about in our five-year plan previously. Uh, the remodel project here, um, we're going to be due for rechassing uh, one of the ambulances by, uh, probably next year. And then, uh, rather than buying a whole new one. Rather than buying a whole new one. And, that, and that's something that I hope to actually have some figures on before next meeting as far as uh, what's going to be, you know, I mean, you know, we look at both of those, you know, knowing that a new ambulance is probably going to be about 150000 um, a uh, you know rechassis should be roughly half of that, uh, but uh, we'll you know we'll actually get some numbers together uh, for those. Um, you know, and uh, we also have been talking about the you know the Type Six engines. Um, you know, we should at this point have an agreement to sell one of those Type Six engines at thirty-five thousand, but that took us months uh, to get to that point. Um, you know, we had talked about possibly rechassing the other one that has the uh, the smaller engine that basically makes it very undesirable on the on the used market. Uh, so basically, rechassing that with a new Dodge chassis, using the old chassis, and basically, uh, you know, kind of using that to become one of our utility vehicles that's less critical um, moving ahead. So that's something we're we're kind of looking at the. The feasibility of right now, but with a different Dodge dealer. With a different Dodge dealer, yeah. We've been, you know, the Dodge. Uh, the guy is. Uh, I'm not going to recommend him for anybody looking to buy a car. Uh, yeah, which Dodge? It's Colorado Springs Dodge. Oh. They, uh, they, they came in with the low bid, but they also have come in with the low service. Mm -hmm. That's the reason. The case, yeah. yeah. Okay, any other questions? Anything else on the budget? That was a great start. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Very good. Okay, you want to shift into your Chiefs report? Okay, Chiefs report's uh, pretty brief this month. Um, we uh, had 83 calls in September, so with the end of the summer, we saw a pretty uh, significant kind of drop off in, uh, in calls for service. Um, especially things like uh, motor vehicle accidents that dropped uh, off quite a bit. Um, really pretty slow month overall. We had one uh, structure fire, really was just a, a dryer fire. Uh, so the loss was uh, a used dryer and a load of towels. Um, <laughs> yeah. Small town news. Small town news. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's interesting we were just talking about that. We're, we now do more rope rescue calls than we do structure fires. You know, no, not to mention all the EMS and everything else uh, that we're doing. So it's an interesting shift in um, in uh, service that, uh, service requests that we've seen. Um, we did. I got uh, numbers down for 293 hours of staffing and 225 hours of training. However, um, I'm sure that uh, not everything got entered in the last month. So. Those numbers are actually pretty low. Uh, and we had 37 transports, which was down from 55 the month before. So definitely uh, got into the quiet season uh, pretty quickly. Um, not much to report on the, on the current issues. As I mentioned, we're anticipating the tenders coming in in December. Uh, we're, we still don't have an answer from Colorado Springs Dodge as to when the uh, squad truck uh, will be here. Um, we have ordered the body, and uh, that was included in the, the bills that uh, we just ran in the last um, one. So I think we're going to end up with a body sitting out here on on uh, sawhorses while we wait for the chassis to show up um, uh, until uh, until that gets in. Um, that's actually going to be really useful because you know with 
not just the rope rescues, but we've also added several. Uh, we've had a, quite a few like hiker fall calls. Um, got a recent one. Yeah, this yeah, we were in Staunton uh, two days ago. We've been in Flying J twice in the last really? two months. Uh, one in Meyer Ranch, several others in Staunton. And uh, you know, that's kind of what we've targeted as one of the main focuses for this squad. So as it stands right now, if we want to get all our stuff there, we have to send an ambulance, our big rescue, and a pickup truck with, uh, with the UTV on it to get everything there. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to consolidate that down to the squad could tow the, the, squad could tow the UTV and you know, taking the, the, the big uh, rescue in, into the park the other day, the roads are really badly rutted when you get up in the park. Uh, it's, uh, it was a really slow and unpleasant ride driving that big rig up there. So uh, I really wish we had done that in while we were still in the season here. Unfortunately, we should have that in place by next year and be a little bit more efficient in getting our equipment in and getting uh, set up uh, for that. Um, the, uh, well, I'll talk about the, uh, the new rescue bumper with the interlocal agreement to your short. And then the other thing that's been uh, kind of a big thing lately has been uh, the recruiting. Uh, we've had two or three uh, candidates here every day. Um, they've, they've kind of figured out they, they all bring like all kinds of donuts and muffins. And, you know, <laughs> they're all trying to bribe us into uh, uh, picking them. But fortunately, I think um, we've had, we've got more than six from in district now, right? Yeah. Uh, Ten in district, and then we're going to uh, hopefully what we're looking at is ten in district, and then fill out a class of twenty with uh, candidates from out of district. So uh, we should have a full recruit academy, and uh, we're going to be able to be pretty selective at picking the best candidates after having seen seen all of them for a couple of go arounds. Are we going to are we going to run stuff for Inner Canyon, and are we going to take? Those I don't think they're interested at this point. Yeah. They, uh, I know Evergreen's in the middle of theirs, Inner Canyon did theirs. They're just finishing it up. They're finishing. Um, so we're, we're not on the same uh, timing with the other yeah. departments right now. I also heard of someone may have to orchestrate a free burn building again in the big city. That's actually something different. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is there something different? Well, yeah, it's not for the academy. Oh, that's okay. Just normal. Yeah, we've, we've got a couple of. Uh, <laughs> A couple of uh, programs we want to get put on next year, the, the nozzle forward class, okay. and uh, we're going to probably have to do that down there because we can't flow the kind of water they want. Okay. You need to be able to flow about 400,000. All right. And we don't have 400,000 gallons of water. Anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's probably out there right now. <laughs> Not even on yeah, Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, do you want me to just move right into the interlocal agreement at this point? Um, why don't we just wait and switch into the new business and just do that all under that okay. item? Do you have anything else for your report? I don't, thanks. Any questions? Good. Thank you. Okay, uh, old business. Is there any old business from the board? No, I don't have any. No. Okay, new business. First item will be the intergovernmental agreement. Okay. Um, so uh, one of the you know one of the things that we were looking at with uh, the requirement for us to uh, avoid that four percent increase in the cost of apparatus going into uh, the next uh, fiscal season for the apparatus manufacturers, we have to enter into a uh, purchase agreement by the end of this month. Uh, but we're still working on uh, you know kind of the design of the apparatus. Uh, because essentially we had about seven weeks notice uh, of that uh, pending cost increase. Um, we had uh, looked into the possibility of doing um, a GPO or group purchasing um, organization agreement in the past and there are two of those organizations that have significant uh, contracts with the fire apparatus manufacturers. Uh, one is called the Fire Rescue GPO and the second one is the Houston Galveston Area Council. And I researched both of those and, and uh, found that the Houston Galveston Area Council uh, is um, actually the larger of the two and it has lower fees uh, to uh, purchase off of it. And so they go out to bid 
uh, with all of the major fire apparatus manufacturers once a year on apparatus pricing. And um, you know, basically then we can enter into an interlocal agreement with them to purchase at their bid price. So we don't have to bid the apparatus separately ourselves. We actually get um, a slightly better price on the apparatus, uh, but we have to pay a little bit on the lease uh, or on the interlocal agreement. So they take a small fee uh, on that, uh, and it ends up being on an apparatus that's about $500,000 or more, uh, it, it, it evens out. And, and we, avoid, that, we avoid the 4%. And we may avoid the four percent. That's the bigger. Yeah, yeah. That's the right. bigger number. Yes. The four, yeah, the four percent is much bigger than either the cost of the the uh, the agreement or the uh, you know the essentially the savings. So we'll end up uh, basically breaking even on the cost of the apparatus this way, but have less effort uh, in having to go out to bid and do that process. We'll save time, and we'll uh, you know be able to order it before the 4% increase goes into effect. Um, so um, that, uh, that's what I recommend. Um, we did get preliminary pricing um, on the apparatus today, and it was a little bit of sticker shock. You know, we, um, <laughs> you know, we, we originally had, had budgeted 600,000, hoping to come in under that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as the dealer mentioned, he said, I added a few things, so this is kind of blinged out, uh, and it's coming Chrome. in at 670 right now. Um, so, Chrome we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna drop a little bit of the bling, uh, and hopefully get it back under six. But uh, it's probably going to be closer to six than I was hoping. But uh, that's unfortunately, you know, we're we're rather than you know knock off you know stuff that we really need to try to get it down to 550. It'll probably be end up closer to the six hundred thousand uh, in the end. Um, the biggest thing with that is he put the he put the bigger engine in it, and you know the difference between a four hundred fifty horsepower and a five hundred horsepower engine in that is in the neighborhood of tens of thousands of dollars. So yeah, um, I think we you know we'll we'll probably look at uh, sliding that back down again. The the engines are ridiculously expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the transmissions. You know, also in the tens of thousands of dollar range. Yeah. But you spec out what you think you need. Yes. Yeah. The basic specs are very close, uh, and uh, our our plan at this point is that uh, Captain Parks and I will go down to uh, Florida on Sunday, and basically they've got this room with no windows that um, you know they shut us in there with you know the sales guy and the engineer and everybody. They close the door and give us coffee and cheap styrofoam cups, and uh, you sit there and you just pound out everything line by line to get everything done. But uh, what we would expect is that we'd have that finished up uh, Tuesday, uh, and uh, they would then prepare, you know, the uh, purchase agreement based on that, and we should have that within a couple of days after that, and, and be ready to to move ahead with the the agreement. And that's what we would take yeah. up. Right. Yeah, that's right. Why. Well, so what we need now is <laughs> a motion to authorize uh, entering into the interlocal uh, contract for cooperative purchasing, which HTAC, and entering into that contract doesn't obligate us to any fees at this time. The fees come about when we place the order uh, for the apparatus with them, uh, and then we would have to again uh, enter into that purchase agreement. Uh, before the end of the month. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Which leads me to my next issue tied to this is to request a special meeting on October 30th at 1800 hours to make sure that we can when we get the price that we can get this executed to get the 4% savings. So I'd entertain a motion for a special meeting. So moved. Second. Again, that will be October 30th, 1800 hours. Marine will get all the notice out. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Any other new business from the board? Okay, any 
any citizens issues? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. At 1912.